What is going on and welcome to my tutorial where I am going to be walking you through how to take ETH on Ethereum and convert it to mana on Polygon. Now I have scoured the internet for different tutorials that are out there and I'm making this one because I think it is the most up to date and I have found the easiest and the cheapest way to do this. So there are several different ways to skin the proverbial cat in this instance, but this is definitely what I have found so far with all my research, the easiest and the cheapest way to do it. So if you are new or if you're just looking to save money, why would you look at any other tutorial. Now while this tutorial is going to be getting you specifically to having mana on Polygon, a lot of the principles are interchangeable and there's a bunch of different cryptocurrencies and tokens that you'd possibly want to be able to replicate this same procedure with. So I invite you to save this video because it'll probably be a useful resource in the future as well. Mana is the cryptocurrency of Decentraland. Decentraland is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, and most popular metaverses out. While you do not need mana to play and explore and participate in Decentraland, you are going to need to get yourself some mana if you want to buy some property in Decentraland, buy some wearables, buy some NFTs on their secondary marketplace. So don't worry, we will get you locked in and set up in this tutorial. Another reason you're going to want some mana on Polygon is so that you can play the first ever risk to earn casino games in Decentraland brought to you by the holyones.io. If you're looking to win some actual crypto or just play something that's more unique and novel than the run of the mill type of games you'll find in any old casino, you're definitely going to want to make sure you check out the Holy Ones casino games that are now available in Decentraland. The games are as unique and entertaining as the NFT project and artwork behind them and they allow you to win actual cryptocurrency not just pretend points that don't get you anything but more on that later i've broken this tutorial up into three segments that will take you from a to xyz get it i'll start off explaining some of the vocabulary like hot wallets bridget and swapping then i'll walk you through creating a hot wallet and cover some of the do's and don'ts then we're going to set up your hot wallet to hold assets on the polygon network we're going to bridge your ethereum then we're going to swap it and then bada bing bada boom we've got mana on polygon if you're new to all of this or just want to brush up on the lexicon and concepts, start at the beginning and work your way all the way through to the more advanced stuff. If you're more advanced and already comfortable with hot wallets and the vocabulary and concept behind them, no problem. Skip right to the last episode to learn the easiest way to convert your ETH on Ethereum to mana on Poly. I'm going to have some links and resources in the show notes regardless of where you are on the spectrum. You'll find those useful, so make sure you dive down there to find those. And let's jump into the first episode. This episode is brought to you by theholyones.io, a refreshingly unique NFT project that is actually delivering on its roadmap unlike 99% of the pipe dream projects that are out there. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to own your own casino? Well, owning one of the NFTs from the Holy Ones is actually going to give you a share in their Metaverse casino games. Less than three months since their mint opened, they've already produced three risk-to-earn games that lets Metaverse players risk real cryptocurrency to win real cryptocurrency. 20% of the proceeds actually gets distributed back to the DAO. That means as a holder of the NFT, you're partaking in those profits. You guys know I've been buying their NFTs and talking about the Holy Ones for months, so this is not just a flavor of the week NFT show. Chilling. I loved this project months ago, I love it even more today, and I'm going to continue to buy and hold these NFTs. Obviously this isn't financial advice and you should do your own research, but you're going to find awesome utility, proven and doxed teams, amazing community, and hilariously unique branding that helped this project stand out above all of the noise of all the derivative projects and overhyped, underdelivered roadmaps that are just ubiquitous throughout the NFT space. Nothing we say is ever financial advice, but we do advise that you do your own research, go to theholyones.io, join the Discord, ask some questions, engage with the community, and see if you become a believer. To start off, I want to cover some foundational concepts and vocabulary to make this a little bit easier and more palatable for you. Let's start off with Ethereum and Polygon networks. You've probably heard of Polygon and its token Matic, and you've definitely heard of Ethereum and ETH, or ETH. But what are they and what's the difference between Ethereum and ETH and Polygon and Matic? Well, Ethereum is actually the network and ETH is the token on that network. Other projects can be built upon the Ethereum network. Crypto projects like Chainlink, NFT projects like CryptoPunks, or games like Decentraland. For the purpose of this explanation, think of the Ethereum network as Windows operating system with a plethora of third-party software that is designed and built specifically to run on that operating system. Polygon is another network and its token is Matic. Just like the Ethereum network, the Polygon network can have other third-party games, crypto, and NFT projects built upon it. While the two networks are very similar, have a lot of the same features and functions, and both have very similar projects built upon them, they aren't directly compatible and some can conversion is needed in order to take one to the other. This conversion is called bridging. Remember how I told you that ETH or ETH is the token on the Ethereum network? Well, you can actually take ETH from the Ethereum network and put it on the Polygon network. And you can take Matic and other tokens from the Polygon network and bridge them to the Ethereum network. And you can also do this with other assets like NFTs. There's going to be several reasons why you may want to do this, but to keep it simple, let's use another analogy. 
Let's say you have a checking account with a debit card attached to it, and that debit card is issued by MasterCard. Now let's say you go to Costco and you want to make a purchase, but unfortunately Costco only takes Visa. What you're going to have to do is set up another account that has a debit card with a Visa logo and transfer your money from the MasterCard bank account to the Visa bank account so you can use it at Costco because they only take Visa. Now your dollar is going to be worth the same whether it's going through MasterCard or Visa. So the value of ETH on the Ethereum network is the same as ETH on the Polygon network. It's just that your ability to spend it is dependent upon that network being accepted where that transaction is to take place. Hopefully I didn't confuse you already. I apologize if I did. The good news is from here on out, the concepts are much easier to digest. The next term is going to be swapping. Swapping is much more simple because this is something that you're doing on the same network and you're probably going to be familiar with this concept. Swapping is simply taking one type of cryptocurrency or token and exchanging it or trading it for another. For example, if I have Matic token on Polygon and I wanted to get Mana token on Polygon, it's just a simple swap. Now a lot of people confuse this with trading on an exchange. And it is very similar, but with most exchanges, the trades have to be done with a base currency like Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe Tether or USDC. So if you're on an exchange and you wanted to convert your Matic to Mana, you'd first have to convert your Matic to BTC, ETH or USDT, then buy the Mana with that. With a swap, you're actually able to convert Matic directly to Mana or whatever other pair you want on that network. Now, sometimes it is necessary to use a third party site to do some swapping depending upon the tokens or currencies that you're looking to swap. But quite often you'll be able to do the swapping right within your hot wallet, which makes it much easier and less complicated. And that brings us to hot wallets. A hot wallet is basically an account that you use to store your cryptocurrency, NFTs, and your other Web3 identities and assets. The foundational differentiator with Web3 is decentralization. So think of your hot wallet as a profile that stays with you. In Web2, we're used to logging on to each one of the different sites that we want to interact in and having a profile or an account on all these different sites. So we have to log into Facebook, we have to log into our online checking account, we have to log into Amazon. So not only do we have to deal with remembering all of our different logins for all these different sites, but we also have all of our data stored on all of these different sites, which means that any one of them can be hacked and we have to worry about the security protocols of all of them. In the Web3 world, all you have to do is log into your hot wallet and that's basically your identity and your account for all these different sites. So as you interact with these different sites, they recognize your wallet, they recognize your identity, and they immediately recognize what they're permitted to see within your wallet. So I don't have an OpenSea account, I don't have a Decentraland account, but when I go to OpenSea, when I go to Decentraland, if I'm already logged into my hot wallet, it will automatically recognize everything within its chain that it has permission to view. So OpenSea will be able to see all the NFTs that I have. When I go to Decentraland, it will be able to see what wearables I own and allow me to outfit my avatar accordingly. Now with the convenience of a hot wallet also comes risk because it is something that is attached to the internet and it is prone to being hacked. But there are a lot of procedures and steps to put in place that will mitigate your risk and your exposure and I do cover those in another video so if that's something you want to learn about I suggest you check that video out. But for this episode, we've covered enough of the jargon and the concepts to be familiar with what we're going to be dealing with. And in the next episode, we are actually going to be setting up your very first hot wallet. 